Hi guys, I am Vitold and it's time for this comparison that has been coming for a long time now. And actually that looks like it's ridiculous, but believe me that it's not. The only two areas that could potentially be ridiculous, well, out of them, just one in fact is. And let me go through all the main aspects of riding such sports touring motorcycles that look like adventure motorcycles and let you sit totally upright. And I'll cover their engines, performance, and this will actually probably be a shocking part. Then how they both handle, then how comfortable they are in terms of sitting and general position on the bikes, and also in terms of suspension. And the last part will be about technology and equipment, just so that you know which one has what the other one cannot, as this may help you make the decision. So, First of all, I do realize that these bikes were initially not really considered competitors. And I was agreeing with that from the beginning. I also do realize that BMW S1000XR is 50% more expensive than the base Tracer 9 without the GT in its name. So without all the additional equipment. And BMW has nothing extra either while being 50% more expensive already. And it's gonna be really interesting to break down. So I've written the previous generation of S1000XR and you will find actually the videos of me, for example, chasing a Nissan GTR on that XR with millions of views, <laughs> which is a shame. Then I wrote the second generation, which I like really much more than the first one. But then there was a breakthrough. I totally changed my mind after riding Yamaha Tracer 9 GT and based on my own experiences, I now believe that indeed BMW S1000XR may be compared to Yamaha Tracer 9 GT or just the regular 9. And if you were thinking about the Tracer, you should likely consider S1000XR, while if you were considering S1000 XR, you may now consider, I think, I believe, the newest Tracer 9 GT that has been unveiled for 2021. Now, let's get into specifics so that I can explain why. I think all of that. So first of all, engine-wise, they seem to be very different and they are. BMW S1000XR has an inline four cylinder engine with 999 cubic centimeters of displacement, while Yamaha Tracer 9 GT has an inline as well, but a three cylinder engine with less capacity. So with 890 cubic centimeters. BMW has 165 horsepower, which is ridiculous, while Yamaha has, well, just 119 horsepower, so a staggering 46 horsepower less, and hell yeah, that's a lot on paper. The direct competitor of Yamaha Tracer 9 is supposed to be, or rather was supposed to be, BMW F900 XR, not 1000 XR, but the smaller, the younger brother, the F900 XR. So the one with kind of similar engine displacement with 105 horsepower and almost identical price. So yes, in theory, that was supposed to work out. But in practice, that BMW, I believe, is no match for the Tracer in terms of performance, just in terms of performance. The difference between 14 horsepower between the Tracer 9 and F900 XR to me, feels larger than those 46 horsepower between the Tracer 9 and the almighty BMW S1000XR. So I am very much convinced that many people, many riders should in the end be considering S1000XR and the Tracer 9, which is 30% less money than the S1000XR, and almost just as much excitement on the road as the big XR. So, okay. There are two more types of data. First one is torque, which for BMW S1000XR is 114 newton meters, while for the Tracer it's 93 newton meters. And the second thing is the weight, which for BMW S1000XR is 226 kilograms, while the Tracer weighs just six kilograms less. That's Tracer GT, by the way, 220 kilograms. So of course S1000XR has to be quicker and it is. I believe that it may be actually the quickest motorcycle of this type. So a comfortable bike that you sit upright because you know it's it's all been mixed now. BMW calls the XRs adventure. Yamaha calls the Tracer sports touring. BMW also calls it a GS family adventure motorcycle. They are comfortable motorcycles that you can sit upright on and which are fairly light 
and tall at the same time to give you better, for example, to give you better knee angle, to give you better visibility and some additional possibilities of carrying a passenger, luggage and so on. So S1000XR is an absolute beast here and it will likely own every other competitor if it meets them on the track. It's not perfect, it needs to for example, stay high in the RPM range, since if it doesn't, it's not that exciting at all. But if you know you're going to play with it, you just don't engage the sixth gear at 80 km per hour, but keep the revs high, you stick to the first on the second gear, and then if you roll the throttle wide open, the whole bloody earth just stretches and becomes flat. It's so quick that it makes your heart beat faster, literally. Your fingers, you know, guys, just wrapped there around the handlebar, they lose blood and your vision gets blurry. Yamaha Tracer 9 GT is not that extreme. However, if you also keep it high in the RPM range and suddenly open the throttle fully, first thing that happens is you closing back the throttle in huge surprise by what just happened. That just happens the first time. Then you know what to expect pretty much. So the second thing you do, is you start smiling and you roll the throttle wide open again. And the bike starts gently lifting its front wheel with a bit of adrenaline being pumped to your blood more and more. And that's actually what happened to me. That's how I was surprised by Tracer's performance. It has nicely long gears that aren't actually too long to make the bike then struggle at lower RPM, but they are long enough for you to enjoy the speed buildup before having to change a gear. And I would say that its gearing makes actually more sense than S1000XRs, which goes over uh, 100 kilometers per hour in the first gear, and at the same time it has its low end pretty anemic, so pretty weak. It is not terrible, but sometimes I would feel like this is not what a 165 horsepower bike should feel like. And once you get past that moment, it feels, yeah, then it feels like a 165 horsepower bike, definitely. Some of you guys actually mentioned in my previous full review of this bike of the S1000XR, please you may check it, the link is in the description of this video. You guys mentioned that, of course, we may replace the sprocket and indeed perhaps this would or it could help in getting more performance at lower speeds, so at the low end as well, while basically only limiting the top speed just a little, which is probably not a big deal. But still, I was super impressed by what Tracer 9 is capable by default, so stock from the factory, and it definitely feels a lot like S1000XR in so many situations, way more like this bike than F900XR, which should stay at home and watch TV when Tracers and S1000XRs are riding around racing supercars. And both bikes can ride, I mean the S1000XR and the Tracer, both of them can ride 80 km per hour in the sixth gear and feel fine with no signs of trouble. They won't be explosive then, obviously, but they maintain their manners and will slowly build up that speed without choking, without any other things. If you want your performance back, just drop a few gears and you may get a, actually a quick shift for S1000XR while a little Tracer 9 GT already has it, and then you may just explode. And yeah, Tracer 9 GT that's over 3,200 euros cheaper than S1000XR already has a quick shifter in this variant, in the GT variant. And to have it in the BMW, you've got to still pay extra. So performance wise, if you are sure you want S1000XR, but you find it hard to agree for the amount of money that BMW wants to charge you, I say that you better go and check the Tracer. And hell, you may be surprised and maybe even relieved, but at high speeds, there will be be a much larger difference and S1000XR will smoke the Tracer more visibly than at lower speeds. And then at lower speeds, for example, riding around the city, I'm just amazed how close they are because S1000XR has to stay basically in the lower RPM level. So the Tracer has some advantage. And one last thing to mention here is that every time I was releasing the clutch, setting off on the Tracer, it would freaking vibrate like crazy and it would sound as if it wanted to die. And I believe that it might be the clutch issue and it was doing it literally every single time. And I know from some of you guys that your Tracers also sometimes do it or they do it all the time. So it's not like mine was faulty. That was a brand new bike, by the way. And I found it annoying. Now BMW S1000XR is always perfectly smooth in the second, in this second generation, the first ones, 
there were some people who were, some writers who were complaining about the vibration at certain IPM range. But what are they really like to ride? And let's discuss how they both handle, as this is where the largest differences are. Tracer 9 GT behaves much more like F900 XR than S1000 XR. And remember that they all weigh pretty much the same already with fuel, so around 220 kilograms, and that includes a 219 kilograms F900 XR. But the perception of that weight, especially at low speeds, is totally different between the 900cc bikes and the S1000 XR. The XR, the big XR, feels quite heavy and like a super long stretched limousine that takes time and effort to change directions, especially at low speeds and super stressed out when it's about to make a U-turn while the Tracer 9, it does that with ease. And so does the small XR with some other difficulties and, and troubles, but also Tracer is not trouble free. And actually, Tracer gives you perhaps not enough feedback and it requires constant corrections when you're leaning and if, if, when you're setting a specific course and it includes some curves, while S1000XR, it just stays as it's set, it just goes like a train, whatever you do with it, it just stays that way, it's, it's amazingly stable. But to learn more deeply how they both behave separately, you may go ahead and check my full review of the Tracer 9 GT, where I actually did describe that issue in detail. It's, again, the link is in the description. So the Tracer does not stay on track that well, and it feels not as stable as S1000 XR in curves and low speed maneuvers. So at any time when it's at the certain angle, and so this is its weaker spot. Remember that the weight is very similar. Its strength is the feeling of being so light and nimble while at the same time not being bouncy and all over the place. And this is the issue actually with the small XR, so the 900 that's jumping, bouncing around the place. It happens when it encounters any kind of road irregularities like bloody bumps or, or potholes. Tracer is much better in inspiring confidence here. And in terms of brakes, well, both Yamaha and BMW S1000XR, they do good job in terms of strength, ease, and dosing the power of brakes and the general feel. In Tracer, I wish just that the brake lever was longer, but I believe that it can be replaced. And to sum up, S1000XR is a bit like an elephant that once you force it to go in a certain direction, but you have to force it, it will stay pointed there perfectly no matter what with awesome precision, while the Tracer will feel like a young ballerina that may quickly fall on its butt if it goes too far with certain figures. So be careful and don't let your fantasies push you too far. But riding in the city, I would go with the Tracer as I really enjoyed it being so nimble and it's ease in changing the directions. Outside of the city, I think I would appreciate S1000XR stability while I wouldn't count the Tracer out at all. I just feel that considering that extra performance, I would like the overall package of the big XR more, especially that speeds may be higher outside of the city and S1000XR will just simply score there. But what about comfort since we are talking about spending some more time on those machines. In terms of suspension, well, S1000XR deals better with bumps, I think. It actually does much better. It feels like a pillow at times now in the second generation, only in the second generation, not in the first generation. Don't mix them both up. The first generation of S1000XR felt so much like the Tracer 9 GT in terms of stiffness of the suspension. And let me also mention that here, the Tracer 9 GT may differ from a Tracer without the GT in its name, since the GT one has a semi-active suspension that might make it more composed and perhaps even less stiff in general. It will be significantly more harsh on your spine than the second generation of the XR, of the big S1000XR. In terms of the position on the bikes, I also like S1000XR more. It's got its handlebar a bit further forward, I think, while you still sit totally upright on it. Where it wins is the position of its foot pegs, which are lower and allow you to stretch your legs better. On a Tracer, I had trouble accessing the rear brake and the gear lever because of the angles down there with my feet. So all the way down next to the foot pegs or rather on the foot pegs. And I suggest you check that for yourselves before you decide 
to buy a tracer. It has its foot base and handlebar adjustable in terms of height, and that's great, but it's likely not going to be a night and day of a difference. And I'm not sure that I would actually enjoy riding it for a very, very, very long time, while with S1000XR, I had no such issues. I know some people don't like its seat, it was fine for me. And this is connected closely with the seat height that is 84 centimeters in an XR, and it's from 81 to 82 and a half centimeters in the tracer, so it's adjustable. It's not adjustable in an XR. So XR seat is higher, but it feels more accessible somehow, as the tracer seat is way too wide in the front part, forcing you to spread your legs like a ballerina again in some extreme figure. And that was an issue for me. And to be fair, I've been seeing comments saying that so many riders hate the new XR's seat. So again, I guess it depends on how you are built. I'm 1 meter 84 centimeters tall and I'm not over 100 kilograms, let's just put it this way. XR seat is not too wide, but it does not allow for a lot of a forward backward movement because it's shaped like this very much and it kind of resembles a proper bucket seat in a car, not, not like my uh, Rolls Royce Phantom Coupe office chair here that's, that's big and, and, and flat and soft, but both the Rolls Royce and S1000XR seem actually, they actually both seem soft enough for me. While the Tracer feels like it's got no padding out there and I was, I was really feeling that my butt was hurting and, and my future babies, I might have been in trouble if I would have spent more time on it. Wind protection isn't great on both of them, but it's better on the S1000X arm. Both have a fairly easily adjustable windshield, but on the Tracer I was experiencing a lot of turbulences and that's a shame. And there was no such issue on any of today's BMW motorcycles, including both XR bikes. Ducati has also figured it out. Yamaha has some homework to do. It's not a big deal. Either just replace it with something taller or just go with a deflector that that and that's and that's interesting because actually Yamaha offers you a deflector, so this additional piece of let's call it a windshield that you may stick on top of that original one. They offer you that already in the accessories. So they already know it's up. If you pay them more, they will fix it for you. As if they couldn't bloody fix it in the beginning. I'm gonna say it's kind of lame to leave it just like that. So none of those bikes fully protect me from a wind stream, even with windshields at highest position. S1000XR would benefit a lot from an aftermarket exhaust, even though it's a four-cylinder engine there. So it will it will never sound that super cool in my opinion, but it can sound a better than stock. And I bet the same applies to Tracer, which actually has its exhaust kind of hidden. I do like what they've done by installing the exhaust underneath the bike. That also lowers the center of gravity, so I'm in. It makes the bike look consistent from both sides. And I've got to say that I think they've done a pretty good job. And overall, considering the whole design, S1000XR and Tracer 9 look in a very, very similar way even despite the exhaust differences. If not for the badges, only judging by the general style, I would say that they might have come from the same manufacturer. There are sharp lines, there is aggressive styling, there are muscular you know, profiles, you know, showing lots of muscles in both cases. And I really like both of them. I think that they both look great. I think I would prefer the XR based on its looks. It's a bit smoother and a bit softer, not as sharp in terms of the lines as the Tracer, but I like the Tracer too. Even fuel tanks have similar capacity. It's 18 liters in the Tracer and 20 liters in the big XR, which likely takes more fuel, which I haven't tested actually. Both have a train drive. So yeah, there's no drive shaft there in the XR. And that may be a deal breaker for some people, some riders who are looking for an adventure motorcycle and they are left just considering BMW R1250 GS mostly or a Harley Davidson or the new Triumph Tiger 1200. Here, it's perfectly normal and I think nobody expects anything more here in this category of sports touring motorcycles. I'm gonna call them that because I believe they both are. They are all adventure motorcycles. They don't go off the road. Remember that XR is so much more expensive than the Tracer and you are not getting anything more here. So you still have to carry a can and spray the chains after riding through 
a puddle. Both bikes have coronal front LED lights. It's just that the XR looks great after you switch its lights on. While the Tracer looks like it's been hit in the eye, got it swollen and closed. Since only one side of the bike can have the lights fully on in the normal beam, in the low beam, not high beam. The high beam actually activates the, the second lamp, which is whatever. I don't like that. I think that's ridiculous and I hate it. Please let me know in the comments if it annoys you just as it does annoy me. Now take a look at the display showing you a speedo, rev counter and all additional information, all the data and all the menus. They are very different. BMW follows one pattern with pretty much all of its motorcycles, from the cheapest ones to the more and most expensive ones almost. The layout, the graphics, and a way of navigating through the menus. There are some exceptions like R1250 RT that has a larger screen and some extra options on it. But rather than that, S1000XR has the same screen as, for example, the cheaper, the lower uh, positioned F900XR. And I think it makes sense that the brand is consistent, but on the other hand, paying 50% more for a bike, I think you'd probably like to see everywhere in every spot that you have paid that 50% more. Here, in terms of the screen, you won't. Still, it's clear with nice graphics, with not my favorite layout of the Rev Counter and Speedo, but with menus that are rather easy to navigate through. And in the Tracer, on the other hand, there's a screen that's divided in two screens, which gives perfectly zero benefits, rather than an interesting, let's call it, visual sensation. <laughs> So it's really different. It looks like a bug with two big eyes staring at you. And well, it, um, at a first glance, it uh, seems uh, much more complicated than it turns out to be, which is good news, basically. What you see by default, that's already there. That's, that's it. So the way of going through the menu using the switches isn't the easiest and the most um, reasonable. And I also couldn't get used to how the indicator switch is placed in kind of a hole. And Yamaha Tracer 9 GT has that quick shifter already. BMW S1000 XR can have it too, but if you pay extra, the GT has a semi-active uh, suspension, while in BMW you can have electronically adjustable suspension with different settings. And if you pay even more, you get even more modes of that suspension. Tracer 9 GT has cruise control already. At BMW's dealership, you have to pay extra for that to have it in the S1000XR. Same with heated grips. <laughs> Surprise. Same with bloody handguard. Same with cornering front lights. Both have cornering ABS. Both have LED lights. Both have, by default, not necessarily cornering. Both have traction control by default, some basic riding modes, and adjustable windshields. And also BMW has this Bluetooth connectivity with its screen and Yamaha cannot have that. Extra things to BMW to match the Tracer 9 GT, because the regular Tracer also has nothing. But without the side panniers still, it elevates its price to 18,000 euros or dollars because they are very similar. This is when those options are added separately to the bike, by the way, not in packs. That may make some difference. With packs, you can likely save some cash. But Tracer is 13,400 euros or dollars. So it's over 4,000 difference with pretty much the same equipment then. Base S1000XR is then 16,300 euros or dollars. And what BMW can have if you pay Additionally, that the Tracer cannot have is keyless access, which is great as it allows you to start the engine and shut it off without using the key, but just having it somewhere on your person. And you may also open and close the fuel cap without looking for a key, which is brilliant, I think. Totally worth the money and you cannot have that with the Tracer 9. Now what Tracer already has that BMW cannot have at all is an adjustable seat height. It's also adjustable foot pegs and an adjustable handlebar, which I mentioned before. And that's really cool. I like that approach. So you guys be the judges here. And one last thing is image. BMW S1000XR is, um, it is the top of the line sports touring motorcycle with immense power. It's the king in its class. Even if we assume that this class is the same as other adventure 
and motorcycles, so GSs, KTMs. So one may believe and then proudly say that their S1000XR is the biggest and baddest, biggest and baddest. Going for the Tracer, you know that there is something more out there, something kind of higher, something more expensive, something more exclusive. And I guess that it's fair to say that this is where the difference in the prices comes as well. Aside advantages in the performance and over a better quality, because I think there's better quality in BMW in terms of materials, in terms of how it feels a little bit, the switches. So there's this quality, there's this performance, and there's this image. In the end, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. And go ahead and subscribe so that I can see you in the next one. See you.